Blessed are the meek. The Bible definition, which the Bible really doesn't have a definition, but it shows in several places what meek is. But it, when you look up in the dictionary, Webster Dictionary, that's not the meek we're talking about. The Bible, the Lord's meek is a lot different than what they have in the dictionary, okay? And part of meekness, Christians, we should not have anything like spiritual pride because uh, that's part of the reason we have denominations and I'm Baptist, well, I'm Pentecostal, you know. We shouldn't be like that, you know. We Pentecostals and, and, and Baptists, I'm going to use them too. You know, we agree with about probably 90% of the Bible. But when we get together, the 10% we disagree on, that's what we're going to talk about. Instead of talking about what we do agree on, we're going to talk about what we disagree on. Well, I speak in tongues. Like, like they're special because they speak in tongues. You know, this is this is spiritual pride. This is not this is not being meek when you take pride in because you belong to this religion or you can speak in tongues or you have this gift and you don't have that gift. You know, stuff like that. That's we shouldn't be doing that as Christians, and we do. One of these days. We're all going to reunite one of these days. I don't know if it's going to be here on earth or... But we, but that's one thing we as Christians, Christians, we need to learn about this meekness, how to be meek. Because if we had this meekness, we wouldn't have that. And the Beatitudes, like I said, I don't know if I said it in here, but I, the Beatitudes, if, you live, if we were to live by the Beatitudes, we would have a, we would have a deep spiritual walk with the Lord. It, the Beatitudes will will make you a new person. Will make a new person. Because the, all these blessings, man, poor in spirit, we learned about that. We learned about how to mourn when we sin. Now we're going to learn about meekness. And this is, this is a good one. Well, they're all good. On all of them, I'll say this is a good one, but they're all good. Becoming meek, it's almost like, okay, I'm not a cowboy, but I've heard you know, horses that are wild, you know, until they're broken, they're wild, they do what they want to do. You know, you can't tame them because they're wild horses. But once they're broken, the one who broke them can control them, right? Well, this is kind of like we are. Once, we, once the Lord can break us from self, once He can break us from self, then He can control us. Now, horses are powerful. You know, they're strong horses. They're, and we st we're still that way. But we're submitted to the Lord now. We still have that in us, but we're submitted to the Lord. And being meek, I'm going to tell you right now, being meek does not mean we're weak. Okay, we're going to find out that out through the scriptures, all right? But think about a horse. Once a horse is broken, his master can do whatever he wants with that horse. We need to learn how to be that way. We, once the Lord breaks us, then He's in control of us. Once we let Him come in and break us from self, He's in control. We can do this poor in spirit. We can do this mourn. We can do this meekness that we're going to learn about tonight. I'm going to show you biblically what meekness means in the Scriptures. And in the Old Testament, where it was prophesied, it shows the Lord's meekness in Isaiah 53, verses 1 through 7. It says, Who hath believed our report? And to whom is the arm of the Lord revealed? For he shall grow up before him as a tender plant and as a root out of a dry ground. He hath no form nor comeliness, and when we shall see him, there is no beauty that we should desire him. Now, like I said before, when we're reading these verses, before we even go further, we need to, we need to see, well, who's... The arm of the Lord. What is the arm of the Lord? You know, it says right here, to whom is the arm of the Lord? Well, who is the arm of the Lord? So when we're reading, we come across stuff like this, we need, before we go further, or we need to go further, so it can show us who the arm of the Lord is. But it, right here, the first part of the first one, it says, who hath believed our report? We have that today. All of us, I'm sure all of us here has experienced that word. When we're telling people, hey, you need the Lord Jesus Christ. How many people believe us? It's not very many. We're, everyone we speak to does not get saved. I wish it was, but we, they don't. 
No, all we can do is sometimes just plant seeds. Yeah, that's what we're here to do is is, is to plant the seeds. We don't, it's not our responsibility to get them saved, but it is our responsibility to, to, to plant the seed in them. And right here from Isaiah, he says, who's going to believe us? Who's going to believe this? And it says, to whom is the arm of the Lord revealed? For he, so now we see that arm of the Lord is a he, shall, for he shall grow before him. And now we got a him. As we read and as we go further down, I'm going to tell you now, but as you go further down, you'll see that the arm of the Lord is a he, and this he is Jesus. And this him is the Father. Like I said, as, as I read the rest of the scriptures, you'll see that. I'm just going to show you that right now. So we, uh, we see that the arm of the Lord is Jesus, and the him is the Father. And in verse 3, he, which we're talking about Jesus, he is despised and rejected of men, a man of sorrows and acquainted with grief. And we, and we hid as it were our faces from him. He was despised and we esteemed him not. Surely he hath borne our griefs and carried our sorrows. Yet we did esteem him stricken, smitten of God, and afflicted. But he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him. And with his stripes we are healed. All we like sheep have gone astray. We have turned every one to his own way. And the Lord hath laid on him the iniquity of, of us all. Now the Lord Jesus has, we know how the Lord has done all this. In verse 7, he was oppressed and he was afflicted. Yet he opened not his mouth. He was brought as a lamb to the slaughter. And as a sheep before his shearers is dumb. So he opened not his mouth. Right here, you know, just reading this, what all the Lord went to, Jesus, what all he went through. And when it says he didn't open his mouth, not one time through all this did he defend himself. When they brought him before Pilate, he could have said, look, this is who I am. But he didn't say nothing. Jesus never defended himself. This is Jesus Christ, our Lord, which we know did not deserve any of this, none of this. He didn't deserve any of it. Now, if he can go through this and not say a word, this is being meek. If he can go through this, being a meek person like this, then we should be able, should be able to go through it where he didn't deserve it. And he went through it. He didn't say a word, it says. So we could ask ourselves, okay, well, this is our Lord Jesus Christ, and look what we did to him. And I say we, because just like Adam and Eve, I have to say we, because it was us, the people. But we're all, we're all one family, so it was we. And as we read this, I always think about the Lord Jesus Christ and who He is. And then when I read stuff like this, I'm like, gosh. But I don't look down on those people. I don't look down at the Jews for treating them this way. I don't look down at them because I, I, you know, I can't say, well, I wouldn't have done that back then. I can say now, you know, but back then, not recognizing them like I do now, I could have done the same thing. The same thing. Now back in verse 2 up here, it says, He hath no form of comeliness, and we, when we shall see him, there is no beauty that we should desire him. You know, some people, because of this verse, some people say he was a lonely, ugly guy. Because of this verse. But, if you read the fifth chapter of Song of Solomon, verses 10 through 16, that description is the description of Jesus Christ. Say it again. The fifth chapter of Song of Solomon, verses 10 through 16, it tells you right there exactly what Jesus looked like. Now, the, the description it gives, we still don't know what he looks like. We still don't know what he looks like. But it's telling his eyes were this way, but it really doesn't say his eyes were blue or brown. But it just says his eyes were like, you know, just, ex I forgot exactly how I said but they're like a flower, you know. But it describes Jesus as being very beautiful. A ruddy. Ruddy in the Bible means handsome. These people who use these verse right here to say that Jesus was an ugly man, they didn't read the Song of Solomon. Because right there it does describe Jesus. And the reason he wasn't desired, it says he wasn't desired, is because... He didn't come as the mighty king they wanted. He didn't come as a king with a sword. And that's why he wasn't desired. 
And even though the Lord went through all this, even though He went through all this, it says in Matthew 6, 50, 26, verse 20, 53, Thinkest thou that I cannot pray, now pray to my Father, and He shall presently give me more than twelve legions of angels? While the Lord was going through all this, it says right here, He could have prayed to the Father, and the angels could have come and taken Him out of this. But also, and the reason he, Jesus knew He could have done that, but the reason He didn't, would He have died on the cross? Would we have gotten forgiveness of sin? No, it would have been judgment on mankind. But that's that's why that's why he didn't do it. I always picture this in my head. I always look at that stuff that the Lord at any time could have called down the legion of angels and could have just left and said, "Forget y'all." Yeah. Because right. all we did was spit on them. The Jews, the Jews had been waiting for the Messiah all their lives. The Son of God, they had been waiting on him. And when we get to the New Testament, you know, they found that Zacharias, the priest, that his wife Elizabeth was going to have a child. And that child was going to be called John. Of course, we're talking about John the Baptist. And it says in Luke 1, verses 14, 14 through 17, it says, And thou shalt have joy and gladness, and many shall rejoice at his birth. For he shall be great in the sight of the Lord, and shall drink neither wine nor strong drink. And he shall be filled with the Holy Ghost, even from his mother's womb. And many of the children of Israel shall he turn to the Lord their God. And he shall go before him in the spirit and the power of Elias to turn the hearts of the fathers into the children and the disobedient to the wisdom of the just to make ready a people prepared for the Lord. So they knew there was going to be a forerunner. And when they heard that... that uh, Zacharias, the priest, was going to have that forewarner. His wife, Elizabeth, was going to have a child, and that was going to be the forewarner. He was going to prepare the way of the Lord. They were, they were like excited. They were, I mean, they were really fired up because they said they're thinking, okay, Jesus is going to be here soon, the Messiah, the Son of God, you know, the mighty warrior that they're waiting on. And when they heard this, boy, you can imagine how they reacted. That the forerunner of the Messiah was already here, and the King would be here. And he did come. He did come. But he didn't come the way they expected. He yeah, didn't. came on a donkey instead of a stallion. <laughs> See, the, Jew, the Jews believed in military power. And they believed in miracle powers because of God. They knew God could do miracles. This is what they wanted. They didn't want meekness. This is what they didn't want. They didn't want meekness. Well, they're, they, well, that's the kind of the Messiah that was waiting on. So yeah. someone that would free them from always being under another kingdom. Romans, Jesus, whatever it was. They were looking to be freed from being under other kingdoms. They wanted revenge. They didn't want meekness. They wanted revenge. That's what they wanted. They wanted it their way. They couldn't wait on the Lord. They had a preconceived notion of what they wanted in Messiah. Mm -hmm. Well, they knew. I mean, the Jews knew this. I mean, the Old Testament in uh, Isaiah, it talks about the Messiah. It talks, it talk, it's got 20 chapters that talks about Him coming. Chapters 40 through 60. It talks about the Messiah. It, is, it also talks about Him coming as a su suffering servant. It, that's what it says. It also talks about Him you know, being a conquering Lord, but it also said... That he was going to be a suffering servant. Well, but the Lord. Huh? He'll come back as a conquering Lord. Yeah. I mean, we know this is going to happen, but it didn't happen then. But the Jews were like, no, this is, this is what we. We read this, but this is what we want. You know, so we can't look down at the Jews because we do that in our lives today. Well, Lord, I know you said this, but I'm ready for this. A lot of times, a lot of times, we get ahead of the Lord. The Jews did right here. They, they wanted to bypass the suffering servant and go straight to the mighty king. I know the Jews, I read about the Jews and I'm like, God, God, God. But then at the same time, like I said, I can't really look down at them or anything. Because there's times in my life, in my life where I'm, I got to slow down because I'm finding myself getting ahead of the Lord. Just like here, they wanted to get ahead. They wanted to skip the suffering servant. God's way of being meekness is in 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 19. For this is thankworthy, if a man for conscience toward God endureth grief, 
suffering wrongfully. For what glory is it if, when he be puffed for your faults, ye shall take it patiently? But if, when ye do well and suffer for it, ye take it patiently, this is acceptable with God. Right here he's saying, God is pleased. God is pleased with you when you do things right and you suffer for it. He's pleased with that. If someone, if you're being, I don't want to use the word suffer, but if you're being accused of doing something wrong and, you, and, you're not, and it wasn't wrong, you were right about it, but they're, but they're accusing you as being wrong and they're punishing you that way and we take it, the Lord said that he's pleased with that. And he also says, now if you suffer for something you've done wrong, he says, no, this, that's nothing because you deserved being whatever you need to be taken for doing wrong. But those who go, who are, be, who are treated wrong for doing right, he said, this is pleasing to them. But if you suffer for doing right, this pleases God. This is the one that, that most of us can't handle. Most of us can't handle this because we're like, if we're being accused of something and we know we didn't do it, we're right away, we're ready to defend, defend ourselves. Right away. And as I just read the scriptures up ahead, we see that the Lord didn't, didn't defend himself. The Lord didn't say nothing. Being meek is taking punishment even when you don't deserve it. This is coming from the Lord. The Lord gave us, he is an ex- our example, which I'm going to get to that. But being meek is, is, the only way we can be meek the way the Lord wants us to be meek is first. These me attitudes, you got to be poor in spirit before you get to meek. These, these be attitudes are in order. You got to do this one, then this one. If you want to do this one, you got to do these first. Okay? You can't just go skip these and then go down to meek and say, oh, well, I can do meek. No. If you can't be poor in spirit, if you can't mourn over your sin, you can't be meek. Because to be meek, just like when you get born again, we got to die to self. Dying to self means the old you is not there no more. The old you that used to jump on people if you got accused of something and you knew you didn't do it, that's not there anymore. That's why the Lord says we're a new creature. Even when things are taken from us, like in Hebrews 10.34, For ye had compassion of me in my bonds, which is talking about Paul, and took joyfully the spoiling of your goods, Knowing in yourselves that you have heaven, a better and enduring substance. What he's saying here, if you're losing stuff, if someone's taking stuff from you, it's wrong, the, you know, the way they took it. But what he's saying here is, let them take it. Because you know what you got up ahead. We know what's ahead of, you know, what's, what we're looking forward to. We're looking forward to our new home. And our new home is going to have everything we need. It's going to be... In no comparison to what we have right now. Uh, you can take the richest house in the world. The biggest, the fanciest, made of gold if you want to. It's not going to compare to what was waiting on us. So right here you're saying, so what if they take it? Remember what's waiting on you. Remember that you have, you're, you're going to be going to a better place than what, you, than what we have now. All right, that's what he says. So... <sighs> Being born again is dying to self. Being meek, you definitely, you get, definitely got to know how to die to self. Just like Joseph, when he was hated and abused by his brothers, jo- Joseph, and they ended up selling him as a slave. And he went to Egypt and he had to do some bad time, but at the end, well, not at the end, but he ended up being like right under the king. His power was like right under the king. His brothers did this, you know, for wrong. But look what happened to him. Now, Joseph, they did this to him. Now, when his brothers came years later and they needed food, they were hungry and needed food, Joseph could have had his revenge. He could have. Well, look what y'all did to me. Now, I'm going to do it to y'all. He could have made slaves out of them. He could have paid them back. But did Joseph do that? After they, after they abused him and sold him as a slave... Did he come back to them and do the same thing? No. <laughs> so this is, this is what's being meek. We don't take revenge. We don't take revenge. Only a Christian, only a man of God, a person of God, can have this kind of courage. Now, we think meek, you're thinking weak. No. 
Being meek is a person who has courage, a person who has power, a person who has strength. That's what meek is. Because that's the only way we're going to have. We have that through the, through the Holy Spirit. You have, to have, you have to have the power of the Lord in you to be able to be meek. Uh, verse 21 there it says, For even hereunto were ye called, because Christ also suffered for us, leaving us an example that ye should follow his steps. Verse 21, for even here unto where you called. The Lord called us to go through this. He knew we was going to go through this. He has called us to go through this. He didn't say, okay, you might go through this. No. He said, I am calling you. And this is one of the things I'm calling you for. The Lord has called us to do this. We don't think of meekness, of being meek like this when we think of being a Christian. You know, yeah, I love the Lord, and you know, I go to church, and, and I read the Bible, and, and I'm good most of the time, blah, 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 blah. This is what being a Christian is. is when we go through what Jesus went through, and like he went through it. we got to remember, which I'll talk about it after all, but we got to remember Jesus was a man, 100% man. I'll get on that in a minute, but remember that. We were called to go through this suffering. Just like I said back in Isaiah 53, the Lord went through all that rejection and despised. Why can't we go through it? If our Lord went through it, the one who saved us, the one who gave his life for us, then why can't we go through it? And then verse 22, who did no sin, neither was God found in his mouth. Which it plainly says it right there. He, he never sinned. Jesus never sinned. And he never deceived anyone. He never deceived. So nobody really had any excuse to, to accuse Jesus of anything because he didn't deceive anyone. All the, the only thing that came out of his mouth was truth. In verse 23, who, when he was reviled, reviled not again. When he suffered, he threatened not, but committed himself to him that judges righteously. He didn't say, well, an eye for an eye, like a lot of us do. An eye for an eye. That's I mean, muscle, you, that's Muslim law, too. <laughs> uh, and when he suffered, he didn't. When he suffered, he didn't threaten to re, to get revenge either. Now this is this is Christianity. I'm talking Christianity to you. We uh, we shouldn't look to revenge anything. We give it to the Lord, like it says here. Commit it to Him, self to Him. That we give it to the Lord, who can judge righteously. We give it to the Lord. No matter what happens to you, I don't care what happens to you. I'm going to give you some stories in a minute. It's not, not stories. It's things that's happened to me. And I, to, I believe in this. I believe the Lord will take care of it. Believe me. I could easily get in the flesh and take care of myself. I try to keep the flesh behind me. And the Lord didn't say try to do these things. He said to do them. He said do, be this way. He said to be meek. He didn't say there's nothing that... It doesn't say in here nowhere, he says, I want you to try to be this way. No, this is the, what Christianity is. The Beatitudes is Christianity. Beatitudes is being a, a born-again Christian. In the Beatitudes, there's no playing around. There's no acting. Either you are or you're not. Now, you, you're going to see how bad we're going to need the Holy Spirit, because only the Holy Spirit can give us that strength to do these things. Only the Holy Spirit. We can't do it on our own. Now, being meek, it also... It doesn't mean you can't get angry. You can get angry as a Christian, and, and it be a righteous anger, which we know about Jesus. Uh, in fact, in Matthew 21, verses 12 and 13, And Jesus went into the temple of God, and cast out, out all them that sold and bought in the temple, and overthrew the tables of the money changers, and the seats of them that sold doves, and said unto them, It is written, My house shall be called the house of prayer, but ye have made it into a den of thieves. But I just, I just want to show here that there is a righteous anger. You know, the Lord, the Lord here was defending His Father's house, That's, which at that time was the Father's house. At that time, Jesus did get very angry at that, and it shows. He showed it. Not just didn't say it; He showed it here. So there, when we're defending our Father, and we're angry of whatever, just like me on, like I told you on Christmas, when they put Xmas, I was angry. And I went up there and did something about it. And the Lord, you know, I'm, he, I'm sure he didn't look down on me for, for getting angry that day. I had to defend my father. My father don't need defending. But when I'm offended, 
because they've they've put him as an ex. You know what I'm saying? So there is a righteous anger. So when I say meek, like I said, that doesn't mean we just don't say nothing. There's times, yes, there's times where we shouldn't say nothing, but then there are times where we should speak up. As Christians, we should speak up. And another kind of meekness is David and Saul. Now Saul did nothing but down David, spoke bad about David, even tried to kill David, wanted him killed. David snuck into the camp. His, his, he, he had his, his uh, sword right there. David could have killed him right there on the spot. He could have. Now David was told that it was prophesied he'd be the king. But the way, now if David would have been looking with these eyes, there's probably no way he could have seen how he was going to be king. So he could have easily have gotten in the flesh, took, taken that sword, and killed Saul. But he didn't. Saul, in fact, David says, it's the father. The father will take care of it. And he did. And David did become king. But what I'm showing is, David could have done it his own way. But he didn't. Here's a man that was did nothing but down him, and even wanted him killed, and tried to kill him himself. But did David take revenge? Did he go eye for an eye? No. He let the Lord take care of it. He let the Lord take care of it. Christians, we really, there's a lot of things in the Bible we don't like. There's not too many Christians who like this part right here, that we're supposed to be meek. You know, well, they do this to me. I'm, I'm a, no, we're not supposed to. If we're listening, if we're, if we're obeying the Lord, he didn't give us a choice. But if we're obeying God, He said to be meek. He didn't say to go pay back or revenge or anything like that. In fact, I just read you the scriptures and He told us how to take it. If we're being wrong for something we did right, just to take it. So there's, there's many of us who don't, we don't like this word meek. We need the Holy Spirit. We need to take the Holy Spirit and let the Holy Spirit control and all of us have it, this lion that's inside of us. Because we do have a lion inside of us. We need the Holy Spirit to take that lion. And con- just like that horse, we need to let him control what are our tempers, whatever it is we have. Did you say lion? Lion. Like a roaring lion. <laughs> you know, I'm sure all of us in here have, well, I guess, lost our temper once, at least once in life. Then the lion out. <laughs> but the world has taught us that it's a sign of weakness. But it's not a sign of weakness. When you can be meek, that's being a man. You know, being a man is being a Christian. Because you could take someone like Ar- Arnold Schwarzenegger, or whatever his name is, the muscle guy. <laughs> whatever his big bodybuilder, you know. Uh, can he... Now... I just take him for granted he's not a Christian. I don't know for sure, but just just say he's not. Now, can he lift a finger against the devil? No. Can he? No. He can take all the muscles you want. You can take all those muscles. He can't lift a finger to fight the devil. But you take this bony little puny Christian over here who fights the devil every day. Who's the man? So the real man, like the sticker says, the real men are Christians. That's true. We fight the devil every day of our lives. Where these other men that might look strong and mighty can't lift a finger to them. Yeah. Aggressive. Now, now, I know we can be meek. I know we can. Because if the Lord gave me what I needed to be meek, then I know he can give it to y'all. And uh, they've heard this before. But I worked for Frito Lay. Delivered in stores. I was in a store, and it was one one of these guys from Iraq or whatever, somewhere over there. He's just cussing up a storm to me. He didn't like the way I priced the dip, and he didn't let he didn't allow me to say, "Well, the reason I put that price and blah blah blah." He wouldn't give me a chance to to tell him why we did it this way. All he was just cursing, cussing, cursing. And for about five minutes, I was listening to him, thinking, let me talk. But he wouldn't let me talk. So I thought, well, I'm not taking this anymore. I turned around to walk out the store. And when I turned around to walk out, now before I say this, 
Let me just say this. I'm Hispanic. All right. Uh, I, am, I am a true Mexican. Uh, and if you talk to the people who knew me before when I was lost, the, the bar I used to hang out at, bike riders wouldn't even go in that bar. bar. Bike riders wouldn't even go in there. That's how tough it was. So I'm just giving you a little... I'm just doing that. I'm not doing that because I like doing it. I'm just showing you this is the way I was. Now, when this guy, when I turn around and walk out the store, this guy kicked me in my butt. Kicks me. I turn around, and when I turn around, he threw coffee in my face. Hot coffee? Well, it wasn't hot to where it burned my skin. I mean, it was warm, but it wasn't where it burned my face. But he threw coffee in my face. And all I did was turn around and walked out. Me. The person I just told you about. Now, who do you think gave me the strength to do that? Hmm? Yeah, because I wouldn't. <laughs> you let the Holy Spirit control you, and you will. You let the Holy Spirit control you, you will. If I can do it, you can do it. Don't tell me you can't do it. No, at that time, I probably couldn't. Well, if, when I was lost, they, they'd have to be... This guy would probably be in the hospital or whatever when I was lost, but... But I'm just I'm using that as an example. Yes, we can be meek. And if I can do it, if the Lord can make me meek and turn around from what this guy did, then I know everyone in here can do it. Because if, if he can have me do it, then he can have y'all do it also. So I don't want anybody to say in here, no, well, you're stronger than me. No, it has nothing to do with me. The Holy Spirit led me out of that store, and I just followed. So we can be meek. We can be. I don't care how prideful we might be on what nationality we are. You know, well, I'm Mexican, you know. No. Once you become a Christian, you can forget about being that Mexican. Now you're just a child of God. Or Italian, eh? You know, other nationalities, I mean. And not only am I Mexican, but I'm also half Irish. Irish people are known for their temper also. So, gosh. (laughs) Man. But anyway... I just use that as an example that we can, you can, if you let the Holy Spirit control you, be meek. No matter, even that. Even that. And then I also have another one, which they've heard. My little girl, my little precious sweet little girl, my beautiful baby, had a boyfriend. He put her in the hospital. I'm depending on the Lord will take care of him. The Lord will. Unless, now if this guy gets born again, you know, praise God. I don't want anybody going, I don't, even him. I don't want him going to hell, because I know what hell is like. I don't want him going to hell. But at that time, at that very time, gosh, it was not easy for me not to do anything. In fact, when I saw him in the hospital, I went up to him, and I, all I said to him was, Hey, you need to get on your knees right now and pray to the Lord, and praise him and thank him that I'm a Christian. That's all I told him. Now the flesh of me, the flesh in me did. The flesh in me wanted to put him in the hospital. Okay? Are y'all hearing me? This is the flesh. I live by the Word of God now. I live by the Word of God. I believe in the Holy Spirit giving me strength. I believe the Holy Spirit can give me the strength to do whatever the Lord tells me to do. I believe that. And for those two things to happen, I know without a doubt that the Lord is in control of my life. I know that. Because, like I said earlier, and, and he feels that way himself. I mean, things like that, we just don't turn away from. Well, he, you know, well, of course, not right then and there, but later on she did finally let the guy go. Uh, she's not with him any longer. And she's, she's married now with another husband. But, uh, whew, it, that... No, I doubt it. He's still the same. But I I just use those two examples to show you, yes, we can. We can be meek. We can. If anybody in here says, I can't, then you don't believe in the Lord. Then you don't believe in the power of the Holy Spirit. We have to believe everything that's in here. Everything. My whole life is based on this Bible. And when I read stuff like this, I just believe in it. I believe it now. When I walked out of that store after that guy did that, 
I mean, it just happened. I didn't have to think about it. It just happened. I just, I walked out. And when I got to the truck, it was like, and I said, thank you, Lord. Because I know what I, I know what the flesh of me would have done. And then in the flesh, I would have been in trouble. Even though he started, attacked me first, but my reactions would have been bad. So I had to say, thank you, Lord. Thank you for pulling me out of there. Because he did it. Remember, it was him. Don't, don't even look at me and think I'm a strong Christian. That was the Lord. I give all credit to the Lord. All of it. I don't take any of it. It's all the Lord. If he could do that with me, he can do it with all of us in here. Amen? He can. But you know, you don't know what's going to happen until it happens. In your flesh, in your fleshly mind, you're thinking that way. But when it actually happens, you don't, you don't know if the Lord is going to say, Hey, come on, John. Well, we can do it. We, Jesus did it. I just gave you an example of myself that I did it because of the Lord. But, you know, Jesus, we can't say, well, Jesus did it because he was God. We got to remember, yes, Jesus is God. Jesus is the Son of God. And Jesus is the Holy Spirit. Now, we got to know how to separate them. When Jesus came down on earth to, be, to become flesh, he was 100% man. He did all those miracles he did, healing, miracles. Everything he did was in the power of his Father. He didn't do it as God. He was not God on earth using his God powers. He was using his powers as we do. We pray and ask the Lord. Okay? He, Jesus, Matthew 4, 2. And when he had fasted 40 days and 40 nights, he was afterward hungry. So Jesus is hungry. He got hungry just like we do. Luke 2, 52, Jesus increased in wisdom and stature. So he had to grow. Jesus, he had to grow while he was down here. John nineteen twenty eight. After this, Jesus, knowing all things were not accomplished, that the scriptures might be fulfilled, saith, I thirst. So thirst. He was thirsty, just like we get thirsty. John 4, 6. Now Jacob's well was there. Jesus, therefore, being weary, tired, Jesus got tired, of his journey sat thus on the well and it was about the sixth hour. So we see he, he got tired, just like we get tired. John eleven thirty five, Jesus wept. Jesus wept. Jesus had feelings. Hebrews four fifteen, for we have not a high priest which cannot be touched with the feelings. He has the feelings like we do, or of our infirmities, but was at all points tempted like we are. Yet without sin. So Jesus was tempted. Just like we're tempted. Jesus was tempted. Jesus was a 100% man. Now again. When I said we're Christians. What does that mean? It means we're Christ-like. What does Christ-like mean? It means we're, we're, we're like Jesus. Now if Jesus can be tempted. Now of course he had no sin. Now the reason Jesus was, was sinless. And we're not. Is because his father was God. It wasn't two sinners. When you have two sinners, what do you produce? A sinner. Okay? But Jesus wasn't produced by two. He wasn't born by two sinners. Virgin Mary and the Father. That's why he was able to be sinless. Perfect. Because his Father was perfect. Now, if, it, if, if, he, if Jesus would have been born of uh, Joseph, Joseph and Mary, well, he had to be a sinner. Because that's what two sinners produce. A sinner. But he wasn't that way, and that's why. But right here I'm showing Jesus was 100% man. Jesus was not God here on earth. Do you hear me? If Jesus was 100% man, just like you, 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 and me, 100% man, and he was able to do this, we can do it. In fact, he says we're, we're going to go through this. So we need to learn. We need to, okay, Lord, what Jesse taught on us tonight, you need to give me the strength to be that way. Because as of right now, I don't see myself being able to do that. That's fine. The Lord knows that. But He also know, He wants to know where your heart is. Are you really wanting to have that kind of meekness? Or are you like, well, no, I, ain't never, I don't want to be like that. Well, then you're not giving 100% of your heart then. If there's things in here and you just totally don't want to be like that, then you have not given them 100%. Because what did I read the other day? He wants 100% of your heart, soul, and mind. 100%. He didn't ask for 90%. Like I said, 
If you would ask for 90%, then we could put this meekness and say, okay, I don't want that one. That's 10%. That one I don't want. But he said, no, I want a hunk. He said, I want all of you. All of you. Now, we're going to have weaknesses. We're going to fall. But we've got to have the heart of, i got to be like Jesus. I gave my life to him, and I need to be like him. I need to be Christian, Christ-like. You know, in uh, Numbers 12.3, it says, Now the man Moses was very meek. Moses, saying he was very meek above all the men which were upon the face of the earth. So right here is saying that Moses was the most meekest of all men. Moses. We look at Moses, we look at him as being a very godly man. Because he let he allowed he allowed the Lord to use him to take the people out of Egypt. And then this is the same thing. Moses had the same kind of anger that Jesus had. When Jesus got angry because of the temple when he went into well when Moses was given the tablets, the Ten Commandments, and the Lord showed him that the, that the people had turned from Jehovah God and made their own God, the calf, Moses broke the tablets. Now he had the same kind of righteous anger Jesus had. He was angry because what the people did against the Father, just like what Jesus did. So that's why I say we, do, we can have a righteous anger, even though I'm preaching this here, but we can have a righteous anger at the same time. Another way Moses showed his meekness was when he was called to free Israel out of Egypt. And Moses said in Exodus 3.11, he says, Moses said unto God, Who am I that I should go unto Pharaoh and that should bring forth the children of Israel out of Egypt? Moses saying, Who, who am I that you're going to use me to bring your people out of Egypt? Now Moses was a godly man. A very godly man. And he was saying, Lord, who am I? What, you know, me. What, me. Not like, you know, he said in, in, in meekness. Do you understand what I'm saying? In meekness he said, it, Lord, you're choosing me? Me to do this? <clears throat> Exodus 4.10 And Moses said unto the Lord, O my Lord, I am not eloquent, neither heretofore, tofore, nor since thou hast spoken unto thy servant, but I am slow of speech and slow of tongue. Now Moses was saying, Lord, how can you use me? I'm not an eloquent speaker. I'm slow of speech. How can you use me? I'm, I don't have, you know, I'm not a big eloquent person who can go before a king and say, God has said, let my people go. But God said, no, you, Moses. But you see where Moses' meekness was? Moses was a godly man, and he showed his meekness by, by saying, Lord, me? You're choosing me? <sighs> Same thing with Paul. Paul was probably the most educated of all the disciples, the apostles. And he, he wrote most of the books in the New Testament. He refused to put any confidence in himself. The most educated of the, the, of the apostles. And like I said, he wrote most of the New Testament. And he said, he, he, didn't want, he didn't have no confidence in himself. In Philippians 3.3, 3, he says that, that he has no confidence in himself. He also knew that he could do all things, but only through Christ who strengthened him. Anything I can do, Lord, anything I can do, I know I can do it because you're the one who's going to strengthen me. Lord, you want me to be meek? We've got to be like Paul. Paul said, yeah, I can do it, but only if you strengthen me. So if we're having a problem with being meek, we need to get on our knees and go to the Lord and say, Lord, give me, give me this meekness. If this is what being Christ-like is, and that's what I want to be, Christ-like, then, then pray to your Father and say, Lord, give me this strength. And you won't know you have it until it happens. You won't know if it's there until something happens. Meekness, like I said, is, is not in the dictionary. This kind of meekness is uh, us totally surrendering to the Lord. This kind of meekness has to be has to come after you get poor in spirit, when you realize you're absolutely nothing without the Lord. It comes after you mourn because of who you are, a sinner, and when you do sin, it you have you mourn over it because it's hurting your father. You've you've sinned against the Lord. The Bible says follows meekness. When you can do those two then meekness falls in there. 
and you can do the meek. You can be meek. Don't let me hear anybody in here say, I can't be meek. Because if you say that, you're saying, my Lord can't take that from me. The Lord can't give that to me. Do, you, do we see what meek means? Yes. Yes. Do you know how meek can totally really change your life? Just living for the Lord. This is just one step of it. Can you imagine the peace you can have? Imagine. Imagine. Because you take it off your shoulders. Yeah. The and that's uh, her, with the insurance company, uh, have these people, their health plan. They call me once a month and they ask me, well, you know, they ask physical health and all that. And then they talk about stress. And I tell them, I said, uh, no, I don't have any stress. I said, I'll, I give all my problems to the Lord. Oh, well, that's, you know, blah, blah, blah. <laughs> they were being nice. <laughs> that's not being nice. But, but seriously, but seriously, I've taught on, when you, God's rest, I've taught on, it's, it's called God's rest. I have a teaching on it. When you give, when you give it to the Lord, don't just say it by mouth, but when you really give it to the Lord, believe me, stress, ulcers, depression, it's not for Christians. Not if you give things to the Lord. If you really give it to the Lord, you don't have to worry about these. You don't have to worry about them when you really give them to them. Now, there's the people who say, oh, I gave it to them, but they really didn't. But when you really give stuff to the Lord, this gray hair is not from stress. It's from Jody. No, I'm just joking. <laughs> no, I'm just joking. Gray hair is just gray hair. I'm just getting gray hair. But I... Just like that guy, I gave him to the Lord. And one of the things I had on here was love your enemies. It's hard for us to love our enemies. This guy was my enemy. But I did pray for him. I prayed for him. Uh, not only that, I was praying for my daughter for her salvation, that she find the Lord, but I also prayed for him also. Because like I said, I, even him, even him, I don't want to see him go to hell. I don't want to see anybody go to hell. My worst enemy, I do not want to see him go to hell. Because hell's for real. Mm 